Same thing he did with me. He's with this woman. I want to confront him. I saw you kissing her. Give this to your mother. Give this to her. I don't know I told why you front yourself like that. I told that. you. From cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh, Jesus. I asked her about his and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hey, there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get your camera off. Get up. Get up. Get up. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Please meet Rose Harden, a young woman who comes to Cheaters with concerns about her boyfriend and some of his questionable excuses. Frustrated by the impasse, Rose visits Cheaters to protect her best interests. Rose Harden, age 53, an office assistant who is quite concerned with her boyfriend's mounting and inexcusable disappearances. I love very much, but in loving a person, you have to feel like you're being loved also. And I don't feel that. From and that's one of the reasons why several times I've attempted to break off from the relationship. But he has me questioning everything because you would think that if he didn't care something about me, he would go on his way. And he, he doesn't. He will find me. He'll come back to me. I'm just very tired of it. I'm tired of staying at home on weekends in hopes that he'll surprise me, knock on the door and say, hey, uh, let's do something together, you know? I'm just really stressed out over the relationship. I think three years is long enough to continually tell someone, I don't like this, I don't like what's going on. There's just a lot of questions uh, that I have and I need for them to be answered. I need to know if this man cares anything about me at all because right now, it doesn't seem like he cares. Uh, it seems like he only cares about uh, the sexual uh, part of it. I don't want a man wanting me just for sex. Uh, I'm a proud woman. Uh, I deserve more. I'm a good woman. I deserve more from a man. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity withheld, age 45. A security guard who may be seeing another woman while sending his girlfriend to the recycle bin. Investigation day seven. After laying low at his place of employment, P.I.s spot a large gentleman who fits the description given by complainant Harden. He looks in the direction of investigators, but appearing unconcerned goes about his business. The suspect marches straight over to an unknown female who seems to be waiting for the muscular man. The two chat for a while, and then the suspect altruistically escorts the woman to her vehicle. His body language speaks volumes as he grabs her hand and attempts to send out a few vibes of endearment. The unknown companion seems to be somewhat enraptured by the confident beefcake. Nonetheless, the two go their separate ways as Cheaters moves to prepare for the next encounter. Investigation Day 10. Cheaters agents discover the suspect takes a liking to one bar in particular and decide to remain holed up in that ritzy hotspot for any signs of the bloke. After a good while, P.I.s finally spot one of the participants. The suspect's companion, who has now been identified as Eva Shea Fletcher, enters the establishment and takes a look around. 
It appears that she's supposed to be meeting someone, but is having trouble locating the mysterious individual. Companion Fletcher takes a seat and waits for a long time, but still, no one shows up. Finally, after roughly two hours, the suspect shows up and attempts to explain his way out of the debacle. Apparently, his gift of gab works like a charm, as Companion Fletcher quickly pardons his tardiness and turns her attention to the more pressing task of worshipping the bumptious man. In the meantime, complainant Harden gets the old one, too, as observed in a recorded phone call. Hey, baby. So, you coming over to see me tonight? Uh-uh. Are you still in the shower? I just got here a few minutes ago. Oh. What time is it? It's uh, 11. It's 11 already? Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, where well, do you want to call me back? Yeah, I'll call you back in a few. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Investigation Day 16. Cheaters agents strike gold on this particular evening after coming up empty for six long days. The suspect pulls into a local eatery, gets out of his car, and quickly makes his way to the entrance. It could be that he has a hot date this evening. P.I.s take note of his dashing attire. Yes, indeed, the suspect does have a woman waiting on him, and a quick zoom in confirms that it's Companion Fletcher. After dinner, the suspect leads his pet over to the patio and orders some late-night cocktails. Cheaters realizes that all this must come to a swift and immediate end. Complainant Harden will soon be emancipated from this situation of perfidy and cuckold. After the break, the confrontation. With all the evidence out in the open, Cheaters arranges a conference with Rose to confirm her suspicions. Tired of the ongoing drama, Rose prepares to face the possibility of her boyfriend's dishonesty. Rose, thank you for being here. Uh, I know that the reason you contacted the show initially was because you had some questions about your relationship with... We do have some information that I think you'd probably be interested in seeing. You're ready to take a look at that? Right. I am. As the investigation started, the detective was stationed outside of his job. After some time, he was met by a young lady. They spent some time chatting. Now that's as much as we were able to ascertain on that particular day. On this day in the investigation, the detective was inside a restaurant where he's known to frequent. Mm -hmm. Before long, pulls up in his car. Mm -hmm. And there we've got a good shot of him greeting the same woman that he had met out in the parking lot. As they're walking in the restaurant, they're holding hands right there. Right. They sit down. Looks like she's having a glass of wine. It's a nice romantic dinner. After dinner, they embrace one another. He gets home in his car and drives away. Mm -hmm. On this day in the investigation, the detective followed. He goes to another restaurant, so he's still not picking up this girl. Now they're embracing when they greet one another. And here they are spending really quality time together mm -hmm. when he's telling you he's either too tired or at his mom's. He doesn't have any money is what he's telling me. He again walks her to her car. Mm -hmm. We see another prolonged embrace. He goes to lean in almost for a little kiss and she pulls back, then concedes and gives him a little peck on the cheek. Mm -hmm. We do know where he is. Mm -hmm. He's with this woman, mm -hmm. and they're eating at a restaurant right across the street. Mm -hmm. With this information, my question for you, Rose, is what would you like to do at this point? I want to confront him. We'll just go ahead and load up in the truck, and we'll start going in that direction. Okay. okay? I want you to come right with me in this direction. Well, Rose, I see you brought your daughter, Dina, with you tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, does Dina, uh, she looks like she's got some stuff that she might want to <laughs> say, too. Excuse me one second. Yeah, it's Joey. Yeah, we're actually pulling in the, in the parking lot right now. Pull up in the fire lane. OK, is that his car? Mm-hmm. And this is the purse he gave me that I want to give back to him. Thank you. 
Here we are. He get this to his mama. <laughs> and it's time to go. Coming up next, the conclusion. trying to get away. Hey, don't you want your purse pop? And just so you know, here are the condoms oh my that we use. Here are the condoms, in case you need them. Because he's gonna do you the same way he did me. He, he ran off into the apartment. Yeah, just like a sissy. And you can just slide in the middle. How you doing, guy? What's going on here? Well, it's a television, this, uh, television show. Now, you understand you're on private property, right? We'll leave them, we'll Yeah, that's what you need to do yeah, is leave right, right now, now or you're going to get in trouble. Go to hell. Kiss my ass. It's all cut it. Your, your boss already said to cut it. Get off. It's criminal trespass. It's private property. You need to leave right now. This wasn't your intention, but aside from getting your own questions answered, you probably helped someone else avoid being in the same position mm -hmm. 
and hopefully if more people see this, maybe <laughs> and that's his exactly, next victim. Right, that's exactly what I wanted to do. That was my purpose. Where do you go from here? Oh, I'm, I'm going on with my life. And like I said, he, he better not call me again because yeah. I'm through with it. Following the confrontation, Rose attests that once a person has been untruthful and devious, they can never be trusted again. Coming up shortly, Cheaters update you on her current frame of mind. But next, Cheaters presents Emmett McCrowan, an apologetic man intimately involved in the Brian Willard case. Emmett comes to Cheaters to explain how he got into such an ugly situation. Emmett Crowan age 25. Emmett comes by Cheaters to tell us how his experience on the show has changed his life in more ways than one. When the crew first came into the apartment, I didn't know if it was the, the, the cops, if it was Brian, if it was the DEA, the FBI, or terrorists. I just, I knew that somebody was coming in the apartment and I, I, I needed to get out. And I, I took off running and I ducked out the window. Can you tell us why you're here with... Okay, with... get out of my face. Go away. I, I was running down the down the service road of the highway, and a car pull, <clears throat> pulled up next to me, and I immediately just jumped in. I was freezing. It was cold. And uh, they asked me where I was going. I told them I was, I was going towards the Mesquite area, and they, uh, they told me they'd give me a ride, but I would have to kind of earn my ride. And I was like... You know, no, 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 that's, uh, that's, that's all right, you can let me out at the lot. And, well, they, I guess out of the kindness of their heart, decided they'd go ahead and give me the ride to, the, to my mother's house. Do we know where he went? Let me see what's happening. Unknown vehicles picking up third party. He's now jumping in a car and taking off from this location. Just to get a follow at this time. But he's in a car, so he did get picked up. He's in a car, we don't, you're on him. Stay on him and let us know what happens, okay? Brian and I have just actually started talking again. Um, it's been almost a year, but I guess I talked to him for the first time in four months, I guess three days ago, and he, uh, he was just calling. He, he called to check on me, see how I was doing. I my, my, lost my father and my sister back in, in June, so it's been about four months. Dude, Christine's gone, dude. You can have her. She's gone. Oh, she's not yours now? She's mine. So all this was over what? Just a piece of ass, huh? That piece of ass was my piece of ass, dude, and you took that from me. You're a bitch for what you did. I want to appreciate one thing, though. I do appreciate one thing. Now I know she's a cheating bitch. Once again, I want to apologize to Brian, to his family for hurting him the way I did, and, you know. She... She wasn't anything to me. She, she never meant anything to me, but she meant a lot to Brian, and and I, I did Brian wrong by betraying my friendship with him. And in the end, it wasn't it wasn't worth it, and it never would have been. For more information on these and other cases, log on to Cheaters.com. Rose Harden appears relieved to have washed her hands of the man that she's been involved with over the past three years. Rose has made several attempts to contact the suspect and demands an apology. The suspect has refused to answer his phone. She says that he has left a bruise on her heart, which will take a long time to heal, but nevertheless confirms that she's looking toward the future with a positive outlook. Eva Shea Fletcher admits that she was shell-shocked when the cheater's crew surrounded her in the bar. She explains that the suspect got what was coming to him and has ended all contact with him. Ms. Fletcher says that she admires Ms. Harden for her strength and hopes that the two can one day be friends. Cheaters producers were unable to contact the suspect after many attempts. <laughs>